What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Creighton 3, otherwise known as the Avatar Bishop X, bringing you today some Heroes of the Storm gameplay. Now, I know I may have put up a video or two before, but I hear so much junk being talked about. My favorite hero, the Lost Vikings. I hear how it's an automatic loss, and I hear how they're the worst pick ever, and I've even had people get so upset when I picked the Vikings that they sat in the base and didn't play the game at all. Now I know there are some troll picks, but the, the Lost Vikings is not one of them. And a lot of videos that I've been watching, like when I first wanted to start playing this game, and I first wanted to try something unique and different. I went and tried to watch videos on how to play the Lost Vikings. You want to know what I found? I found that there's like two people on YouTube that make videos and they're guides. Everybody 100% believes they're guides. But the problem is these players don't mean the gods that they're telling you about. So I'm listening to a guy who has less than 2% of his games played as the Lost Vikings write a guide on the Lost Vikings and then I'll listen to people during my games tell me no 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 you're playing the Vikings wrong as of right now um, I have over a 50% win rate with the Vikings uh, and I'm not a good player I'm bronze silverish but when I play my Vikings I seem to win more than half my games I think I'm at 53% and there are some maps where I'm even at 70%, like Cursed Hollow. So, I'll give you my theories on how the Vikings should be played. First off, uh, the other person's guide said that you should split the Vikings into groups of two. Uh, and then I have a lot of people tell me, well, if you can't control all three perfectly at the same time, you, you, you should, if, if any of them are sitting AFK, then you're better off having them all together. No. You, your best thing to do with the Vikings is to always have them split apart. If you can't handle it, learn it. Uh, I started in the beginning um, only trying to control two at a time. Uh, but I'm always having all three of them split apart. So let me try and break it down to brass stacks. So in the beginning of the game, uh, what you should try and tell your teammates is... All of them, two of them go top, two of them go bottom, and you will solo middle. So if you look on your keyboard, you uh, you can control the three different Vikings by pressing the one, two, and three. In my head, the way I do it is, one will give you um, one will give you the tank Olaf. I throw him in the top. Two will give you Balog. He's the wave clearer. I put him in the middle. And three will give you the short guy, Eric. I throw him on bottom. Now the first talent I take is to make Eric gain stealth if he stands still. Now, why would I take this? Because if you throw him, because this now lets you only focus on two of your heroes. Because you can throw Eric in the bottom lane, stealth. Throw him somewhere out of harm's range where he can still soak on the edges is, is usually good. And he'll sit there and not attack, but he'll soak XP. Now all you have to do is control Balog. Balog is who you will have in the middle. Now his specialty is that he uh, wave clears. Uh, all, of his, all of his basic attacks are ranged and they split and they'll spl do splash damage to whatever targets are behind them. This gives you good wave clear. Uh, but your second talent, you will be able to heal off your auto attacks. Your third talent will be to, the longer you are attacking, the quicker your attack speed will be. So basically, you're dumping all of your hopes into uh, the guy you have in the middle. And you're making him be able to solo, while the other two Vikings just hang out. You'll get yelled at. You'll get screamed at. You will get people who will ping on you relentlessly to move your Vikings. Pay them no mind. Because if you bring your Vikings together, uh, 
they're a little bit hard. To me, it's harder to micromanage when they're all together. But if you bring them all together, you're missing out on the point of them. XP. Like right now, um, I think at this point in the game, uh, uh, we are losing the fights, but I'm pulling ahead on XP. I think we just lost the first shrine or whatever. But still, just because of the fact that I have the guys split up and they're constantly pushing, uh, we're just getting a, a, a boatload of XP. I think I keep trying to tell my teammates to, uh, you know, just go two top, two bottom. Uh, but for a map like this with an objective, it's even better. Uh, Olaf has been top the entire game. Will be uh, this entire game, he'll be top soaking. And everybody's busy doing other stuff, and he just gets to slowly push. The problem with Olaf is his lane clear is horrible up until you get uh, Burning Rage. And once you get Burning Rage on Olaf, he can just sit there and soak minions, and he can tank an entire minion wave by himself and kill. You'll see that. Um, so, <clears throat> the shrines, for example. Baylog has good wave clear. So I will send him to the shrines, and then I'll have the other two soak the lanes. Now, what seems to be something a lot of people don't know, and I'm wondering what took me a while to understand, is if you press the A button, it'll bring up a little target. Okay? And when you do that, uh, it'll allow you to attack an area. So you can click on one of your Vikings and select for them to attack an, air, an area. So anything they encounter up to that area, they'll just automatically auto attack. Like watch. Okay. Now Eric is going to auto attack. Now back to Balog. And Olaf is up top and he's going to auto attack. So they're all just going to sit there and constantly auto attack. This is probably the best way to get away with not being great in micromanaging all three at the same time is you just leave it up to them to automatically know what's going to go. So you will get little indications when they are under attack. Like you'll either see their hit points flicker or you will start to hear whatever's going on. Like if uh, Olaf wanders too close to the tower cannons, no matter where you are on the map, you'll all of a sudden start to hear the tower cannons going on. The problem with uh, Olaf is uh, w when he's on top, his lane clear is really bad, and you sometimes get caught in that dead zone where if you attack something, you're just going to run into the tower. But I mean, uh, the great thing about Olaf and the Vikings in general is, is if you start collecting enough uh, regen orbs, which is their, which is their passive, uh, Olaf can sit up there and eat, I'd say, seven tower shots, and then he can walk out of combat for... 10 seconds and he's already back at full life and you just go back in. He's, he's Olaf is the best regen tank in the game. I'll just put it like that. Um, as you see now, we're uh, losing. We were losing the fights up until that last shrine, but we're already way ahead in XP. Um, and the Vikings are helping out a lot with that. Um, the Illidan player wants to chase me around. That's the other thing. Um, you're not trying to die, but you shouldn't care too much if they're splitting off to kill you. Because every moment that somebody has to stop what they're doing and go halfway across the map to kill you, yes, you're giving them a kill, but remember, you're only worth a quarter of a kill. So if they're taking time out of doing that, they're taking time out of contributing to XP. They're taking time, because you, you're not going to have any kills. So you're not going to be worth much XP. And you're a, a Zerg character. You're meant to Zerg. So they're not going to uh, get much out of you. It's not like you're on a killing streak or anything. So, right here, I mean, they're focusing way too hard just trying to kill one Viking. Uh, and they're both going to die for it. So, I mean, and I just paid it no mind. I tried to juke as long as possible. But here's a great thing about my setup. So the ability I take is, uh, I don't take the, the Viking longboat. My Vikings are never together. Uh, I take play it again. 
which basically is going to allow you to take your Vikings and summon all of your Vikings again uh, at full health to one location and revive them if they're dead. Now, the ability that I'm going to take after that is called Impatience as a Virtue. That will basically make every time one of my Vikings auto attacks, the cooldown, uh, all their cooldowns will be lowered by a quarter of a second. So if I have all three Vikings constantly pushing, constantly hitting something, my ult is going to keep coming up quicker and quicker. So this makes me care less and less when they die. As you can see right here, Shrine. Uh, I have my lane clear Viking sitting up there and auto attacking. I have the other two Vikings pushing the lane. And like I said, the tank is really good for eating tower shots getting out of range and as you can see with the uh, burning rage on he can attack the towers kill all the minions it's like that is the best talent for vikings i don't know why people are not taking that um, and gotta make sure you update your people every once in a while to keep moving so at this point uh we killed enough and we're now getting the Punisher. So now, in the beginning, we were losing fights. And I think my team was getting frustrated. You saw people saying stuff like fail and worst ever and blah, blah. But now that everybody, we're, now that we're two and three levels ahead, everybody's now happy. Because now we're winning team fights uh, because of the advantage. That's, we, you know, the, that last team fight, we had our ults and they didn't. Like, that's a big advantage there. Um, also, another thing about the Vikings. If you're taking damage, hit your mount button and run away. You know, make them chase you. Because remember, you can click anywhere on the map, just as long as your Vikings are running away. If they're spending their time chasing you, you're winning. Because as they're chasing your one Viking, your other two Vikings are pushing another one somewhere else, making more XP, making more siege, making more push. I mean, it's all, and, and wash. So they kill one Viking, that's all cool. I'm going to summon all three, and I'm just going to take this tower. And putting all three of them together is absolutely devastating, because the tank can just eat tower shots, and the two range will absolutely demolish a tower. Uh, I think from start to finish, I mean, look at that. Um... I don't know really much what else to say. Oh, yes. Um, you definitely want Fury of the Storm. Fury of the Storm is basically every five seconds or whatever, uh, you get a cleave attack where your one attack hits all lane minions for like 200 damage or something like that. What makes this crazy is each Viking can trigger it. Oh, it will all come south and get me. So this is just all the more reason to spread your Vikings out. If you have one Viking in each lane doing a 200 point cleave attack to each lane minion as they come up, you can't be stopped. So you now have a god that can die easily, but when they die it's not a problem because they're going to be back in 10 to 15 seconds that can continuously wave clear I mean look at the XP that can continuously wave clear and push lanes unless you have another split pusher or they stop everything they're doing to come get you you're going to eventually win uh, I think that's what happens on this game which is why I decided to post it uh, I just got so far ahead in push and XP uh, and Zero Two basically spent all of his time looking for me uh, we just started to pull ahead in team fights, and I just pushed all the lanes, ignored the objectives, and won the game myself. Um, but yeah, that's about all I have to say. Um, to recap, the talents I would say to take are um, level 1, you want stealth for Eric. Level 2, you want Pain Don't Hurt, so Balog can heal himself on the auto attacks. Third ability, you want to make Balog's auto attacks, uh, auto attack speed stack. You want Play It Again as your ult. 
if you want hunk of hunk of burning Olaf or burning rage, whichever way you want to say it, so that Olaf can now uh, clear waves. You want impatience as a virtue, so you can lower your cooldown, so you can use play it again as much as you want. And you want Fury of the Storm. Right here is, they're telling me, everybody get to the objective. I'm like, why would I go to the objective? I can take the core myself. So the entire enemy team and all of my teammates are off doing the objective. I use, play it again, <laughs> teleport all my Vikings in and take the core myself. That easy, gentlemen. You take care. Have fun.